In November of 2016, we received a phone call from an individual, and his father had owned a shipping and dredging company on the east coast of the United States. And as he explained to me and put in a letter that we'll send along with this helmet to the buyer, they purchased this helmet as surplus after the war, and it was actually only used twice. More than likely, based on the condition of this helmet, it was never used by the U.S. Navy. But it was accepted by the U.S. Navy and was part of their inventory. But like a lot of Mark V's, it simply wasn't used. There were so many made during World War II. And so things like this helmet and other related parts were sold off and then sold as surplus through various places in the United States. And that is what happened to this particular helmet and why it's in such great condition. So after the helmet was used twice, in 1960, it was put in a climate controlled environment and kept there until the 21st century and where we have it right now at the end of 2016. Incredible helmet, one of the earliest, and this is the earliest Miller Dunn Mark V we've ever handled. It's serial number 79. But as I alluded to earlier, there's a really interesting, really interesting detail inside the bonnet here that I'll show you in a minute. But first, the helmet in general, fantastic. You almost can't ask for a better example of an all-original, elusive Miller Dunn Mark V. So as we can see here, fully tinned. The only aspect of this helmet that isn't tinned up is right here, uh, the exhaust valve. Probably it was replaced. Now this is a correct World War II era exhaust valve handle totally correct what should be on here. But based on it not being 10, it probably was replaced either at the end of World War II or when this was used twice in 1960. So we'll go around here and take a look at it. Everything is bone stock on this. The glass, everything about it is bone stock. These wing nuts are actually on the edges sharp. It's amazing. Uh, most of the time they're rounded over, worn from being taken on and off with those T-wrenches that came with the helmets. Not this one. These things are sharp. The brails, we took them off, inspected the bottom side. And that's one of the important details of a Miller Dunn Mark V. It's taking the brails off and looking up underneath because Miller Dunn serial numbered the brails to the helmet. When we took them off, we discovered all four our serial number matching, number 79. Great relief. <laughs> and they're also, and it's faint, marked front and back as well. So, numbers matching. We've got the tag here, which is lead. A lot of times Miller Dunn helmets, these lead tags were prone to wear, and you can barely read them. This one's clear. Obviously this helmet was probably only used twice in its entire history. Everything is clear. August 1st, 1943 is when this one was made in Miami, Florida. We go around to the back, as you can see, just incredible condition. Now it's probably hard to see in the video. We'll do some close-ups here in a little bit. But really, there is no working dents on this helmet. Just incredible. Dumbbell safety uh, lock right here. The old little chain is gone, unfortunately. Not a big deal, easy to replace. All four brails intact. We've got all the wing nuts sharp <laughs> as well on the edges. Everything is where it should be. The fittings right here, we've got the communications cap intact. We've got the air fitting cap intact as well. Now, one interesting part that many people don't know about early Miller Dines, typically within the first hundred, is, is that the, uh, the radius here on these fittings, they had this reinforcement. And it may be hard to see in the video, we've got pictures that we can send, but there is reinforcement here on these fittings. Very unique. It's not part of what the Navy asked for uh, in the drawings or specifications of the Mark V, but Miller Dunn did it nevertheless. Now, probably somebody at the Navy, an inspector, saw this and said, we don't want that. That's not, you know, shouldn't be there. So after around serial number 100, that's no longer there. But that is indicative of early Miller Dunn examples. Also, one of the unique examples of Miller Dunn helmets, especially earlier ones, communications cup, not quite as refined as the others made by Schrader, Morris, or Desco. One of those seems a little smaller, I don't think it is, but it just seems to, to stick out a little bit. Other than that, just wonderful, great example. Now right here on the breastplate, got a bit of a dent right there. Nothing major, uh, but certainly wanted to mention that. Also on the back of the breastplate, right in here, Visually, it's really not 
you don't really see it, but it is just slightly pushed in back here. Once again, display purposes, it's not an issue. The top and the bottom go together perfectly. There's no issues there at all either, but just fantastic example. Now, here in a second, I'm gonna remove the bonnet from the breastplate, and I'll show you the secret that this helmet will reveal to us. Okay, I've got the bonnet uh, removed from the breastplate. Since there's nobody here to help me, I did that off camera so it wouldn't look so odd and awkward. But the breastplate and the bonnet come apart and go together very easily. The original gasket is still present in the breastplate as well. So, what's very important with Miller Dunn helmets is serial numbers, of course. And so, when you remove the bonnet from a Miller Dunn Mark V helmet, the serial number will also be on the inside of the neck ring. Sometimes it's very shallow and hard to see, but it should be there. So, what you do, you pick the bonnet up and you flip it over right here. And we'll set it down very carefully. Let it rest. So, it might be a little bit hard to see uh, from the video here, but on the inside, like the outside, it's tin, all original in there. The vents are in here intact just as they should be. There is no speaker inside of there, it has been removed. Now, as a side note, this is a very common way to tell Mark V reproductions from the real ones. Reproductions are never gonna have the air vents inside, uh, whereas real ones always will, unless they've been removed, but you'll still see the soldering marks from those vents. Now, on these Miller Dunn Mark Vs, this also applies to uh, uh, Morris helmets on occasion as well, but especially for Miller Dunn Mark V's serial number right here on the inside of the neck ring. In this particular place right here, we've got the serial number clearly stamped. Now, when I took it out and inspected it, I just couldn't believe it when I looked at it. It's not number 79. And I was a little disappointed because, of course, you want the serial numbers to match. But what I couldn't believe was, and I had to look about 10 times, the bonnet is serial number nine number nine the ninth one ever made i couldn't believe it it matches perfectly to number 79 i made sure that there wasn't a light number seven in front of the nine i looked at it a lot this is number nine i don't know if anybody has number one through eight i hope so i hope it's out there but from my understanding i don't think anybody does i know number 12 exists but this is number nine bonnet ever made really just a beautiful example of possibly the earliest Miller Dunn bonnet uh, in existence and it's in great shape but in the future reference if you're ever looking for a Miller Dunn Mark V or you encounter one look up on the inside of the neck ring and that's where the serial number will be so once again beautiful condition I don't know if you can see it a little bit better here just extreme minor little working dents Hardly worth mentioning, but we've got essentially and possibly the earliest known bonnet for a Miller Dunn Mark V, number nine. Very cool, very neat. Okay, with the two pieces separated, we thought we'd just show quickly what the breastplate looks like with the bonnet removed. Now, as you can see here, uh, we mentioned great condition, um, just fantastic. We've got that small dent right here, hardly noticeable. Uh, original gaskets in place. The top and the bottom come apart and go together quite easily. I could do it by myself. I just didn't want to sit here on camera and struggle and do it, but quite easy to do it by yourself. Two people, this one's a breeze. Um, original Miller Dunn gasket, which is kind of a red rubber material. It's also the same material that they sealed the glass windows on the bonnet as well. So good to note that. Um, some Miller Dunn Mark Vs, they would put a number up here on the top part of the neck ring. This one being a real early example does not have that. Uh, other than that, a complete great example. Um, as we mentioned, a dumbbell safety latch uh, we've got right here. What you would do when you put the bonnet on and put it into place, you've got a dumbbell that comes down here and then this latch closes over it. That prevented the top and bottom from separating while the dyer was underwater. Kind of an important detail right there. But once again, a great example, and this is what they look like. This is also how we ship the helmets to you. We ship them separated to keep them safe. If you have any questions about this helmet or any other Mark Vs or antique diving helmets, please feel free to give us a call. Our number is 
1828. Our email address is helmets at nationsattic.com and our website is oldhelmet.com. Nations Attic has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and we're also sponsoring members of the Historical Diving Society. Thank you.